Okay, so before we take a look at Twinmotion, we're going to start with our source model. I thought it'd be good to actually show you how you can actually import a SketchUp model into Vectorworks. Um, so this is a model that's available on the SketchUp warehouse. We simply drag and drop it in. Um, it's about 49 megabytes, but it's a good good sort of model that we can play with. Now, there really is, isn't much need to use uh, SketchUp for modeling if you have Vectorworks skills and modeling potential. Um, but what we can do is click Options, we can create RenderWorks textures for all these SketchUp materials and we can kind of bring this in and import the model. So as I said, Vectorworks 3D is very sophisticated in all sorts of methods. You've got extruded modeling, you've got NURBS modeling, you've got all the BIM tools you could ever need. Um, so do consider having some Vectorworks training to improve your 3D skills. But that said, there is some great content on the SketchUp warehouse and here is the model that's imported. Now, you notice that um, the SketchUp model actually looks, in my view, better in Vectorworks than it does in SketchUp. And it's quite responsive. We can kind of spin it around and so on. So let's just do a couple of little things. Let's have a little walk through and explore the model before we get ready to export this off to Twinmotion from Vectorworks. You can see it's really detailed. There's lots of nice detail both inside and outside. Um, so I've just simply dropped in a Heliodon, got some shadows on there. And basically, I'm going to go to my right isometric view. And uh, let's just kind of frame up the, the view here. And when I'm ready, um, I'm basically going to export this as a Cinema 4D file. Cinema 4D, again, is a really nice rendering software. Um, I used to use it m a lot over the years. Um, and the quality of Cinema 4D is very, very good. But it does take a lot of time to get good results. So I'm going to export as Cinema 4D. And this, luckily, is one of the formats that Twinmotion will accept really, really nicely. So always recommend you create a new folder for your exports. Um, let's just call this Cinema 4D export. And the file is called House by the Lake. You'll see why in a moment. So when, when we click um, Save, it will basically export the geometry and also the textures. So any textures that have been in Vectorworks, or should we say come through from SketchUp, then to Vectorworks, will be exported. So let's go ahead and launch the Epic Games Launcher. Um, you can sort of download this from Epic Games and get a trial for free. So do bear that in mind. But the full version is really good value. It's only £175 at the moment. So when you open up the Twinmotion interface, this is how it looks. It's very straightforward and very simple. And we'll kind of get into that a little bit more. But let's just look at importing the model. The exported model is actually smaller. It's only 30 megabytes um, than the original SketchUp. So when we import it, let's go for a couple of options. Um, I normally like to either collapse my material if I want to keep the materials as, as one material, or if I do want to actually modify and move objects around, I go to another option called um, Keep Hierarchy. But you can see it's importing the data processing. And once it's finished processing the data, hopefully we'll see the imported model sat in our Twinmotion environment. Okay, that's cool. We can see something in here. Um, so a good little tip. First of all, go out to the manager or the organizer by opening the little triangle on the top right corner. Click onto the model and then click F to fit. Um, you can see I fitted to the entire thing. So let's click F again and just fit to maybe that roof object. So here is the exported Cinema 4D model um, that's come through from SketchUp to Vectorworks um, and now into Twinmotion. Now, apart from the glass, all the textures look pretty good, actually. Um, and this is a nice little starting point that we can work with. So the very first thing I'm going to do is select the ground that's come into uh, the Twinmotion file, or should we say rather the starting ground that was actually in there already. I'm going to move it down. And now you would understand why it's called the house by the lake. So we're just going to drag some water. Um, we'll drag that straight onto the plane. And I've gone for C to begin with. And that's quite nice. You can see that the sea has these edges that sort of move up and down, a bit like little waves lapping the shoreline. Um, and I'm also going to have a quick look at the weather slider and kind of just slide that up and down a bit just to introduce different types of weather. And I think it always looks nice with a bit more cloudy background. That's something I, I would sort of recommend. Um, if you open up the statistics panel down at the bottom in Twinmotion, now you can really kind of see what your graphics card is capable of. And when you get a green, um, your thumbs up, you're basically okay. You're on 80 frames a second or a bit more. That's looking good. I think I'm going to swap that water out for something a little bit bluer, um, something more like the lake one. That's a nice material. And we'll do a little bit more basic work um, before we kind of take it a bit further. So one of the beauties with Twinmotion is the libraries. 
Um, so you can see I can just click onto that Colorado spruce and essentially just click to place it. But every time I place one, you'll notice you get a different size, different rotation and a slightly different orientation. Um, so if you want to, you can select multiple objects and now every single time I click, I get a slightly randomized choice. Um, so Twinmotion will randomize the size and the choice of object. So it's a really good way just to kind of get a bit more variety. Now, a really quick way to get even more going on is to use the vegetation paint tool. Um, so we simply drag those down, those trees that we're interested in, into the dock. We'll get the brush. Let's kind of zoom up in the sky a bit more. I think what we'll do is probably, um, yeah, let's we'll paint a few of those. Let's get our brush a bit bigger. So we'll change the diameter of the brush and you can see I can just spray or paint rather over the surface of the terrain that's imported from our model and really, really rapidly kind of get a nice um, sort of forested look to that hilltop there. I can do the same with the grass actually. I can drag that down and you'll notice that because I dragged it into the painted object, it actually kind of um, is already part of the object. Now I can click on each element and change the density. Um, you can just about make that out, the light green, but you probably won't see it until you get a bit closer up into the view. Um, because Swim Motion has a setting where it filters out the far off objects, like the detailed objects, um, because the grass is extremely detailed. So as we go a bit closer, suddenly you can kind of see in a bit more detail, there we go, the grass is starting to appear over that surface. So I'm going to add a few more rocks. Um, I really love the uh, rocks that come with Twin Motion. They're brilliant, um, really realistic. And one good little tip here is just to kind of pile a few together just to build bigger rocks, really. And they kind of blend and sort of match in quite seamlessly. That's nice. Just sort of dragging those in in real time. And again, you get that naturalism because each time you put one in, it rotates it and it scales it ever so slightly. Uh, these are nice. These are just like more ground hugging type rocks just to break up the, uh, the continuity of that groundscape there. Um, yeah, so you can see we're navigating around in Twin Motion again in the same way that we were with Enscape using the WASDA keys um, or the arrow keys on the keyboard. So now I'm going to select a bunch of multiple plants and bushes. And again, really good library of these. But one thing you do notice with Twin Motion, they all move and blow in the wind. So they're basically, um, Twin Motion has an ecosystem and all of the plants and things that you see are responsive to that ecosystem and the materials also. So when you come to change things like the weather, um, you'll see how cool it is, it responds. Let's go for the boat. Let's add a boat in to begin with. Let's go for a big boat, maybe a little bit big for a house like this. <laughs> Let's go for something a bit smaller. And you can see it's really nice. When you let go of the boat, you'll notice it actually rocks up and down with the water. It's pretty subtle. But that is a really nice touch to uh, Twin Motion. It's all the motion and the atmosphere and things like the moving uh, light particles that you're getting on those shadows. So a little bit different to Enscape in that in that sort of um, motion side of things. And that's for me where Twin Motion really kind of creates an exciting image, um, something a little bit more animated and a bit more atmospheric. So here I'm just dropping on some smoke onto the top of that little wood burning stove chimney. And you can see it just starts to emit particles and smoke. Absolutely amazing. Um, I'm going to delete that background that came in from the SketchUp model. And it looks a lot nicer now I've got my twin motion background. So really after kind of like eight or so minutes work, um, the, the, the view is also looking pretty cool already. Um, so here I'm just going to slide the lighting, very similar to what we did with Enscape. And you can see I'm just basically sliding the lighting up and down, changing the time of day. You get those beautiful shadows coming in, nice sort of sunset lighting. So I think what we'll do now is kind of work on the inside a bit more. Um, let's have a quick look at uh, playing around with the material. So I'm just going to get a better glass onto that. And you can see I can change the opacity quite rapidly. Um, I slide that up and down and sort of play around with the reflectiveness. I'm going to get a slightly nicer wooden floor onto the model. Um, and let's kind of play, have a little play with that and spin that around by typing in the angle there 90 degrees. That's a little bit easier. Um, and then I think what we'll do is we'll have a quick look at some of the lighting. So again, work on the lighting. You can see I can drag those spotlights in, try and get them sort of fairly equally spaced along the uh, underside of the kitchen, these nice IES lights. And if I open up the manager, I can select all of them. And the great thing is now they're all selected so I can play with them all in one go. Um, and that's a good tip instead of instancing as we talked about in the previous video. 
Good, so let's go back into our furniture libraries and let's add a little bit more life and detail to the model. So drag in um, some different items of furniture. You can see they drag and snap onto the floor. It's pretty straightforward to place them. Um, went a bit too far out that time. So let's just place that one there and spin that around maybe. Um, so let's kind of just rotate that round, type in 180 degrees, that's easy enough to spin it around. Good, okay, so we're starting to kind of get a little bit more detail added in. Let's add some plants. So the great thing with Twinmotion, even out the box, it's very easy to basically uh, rapidly add detail using the pre-made libraries. Now we have said before, the key thing here, as well as the pre-made libraries, which are super fast to add, um, is to actually create your own user libraries. Now I really recommend this over time, build up bigger user libraries so you have a bit more variety of things that you can add. Um, let's go for some decorations. We kind of add that nice set of pictures there. Um, we'll just drag a few more pictures onto the wall. It starts to come together quite rapidly really. Once you kind of start to populate the, uh, the scene with a bit more detail than it's shipped with, it really does make a big difference. So you can see it's quite a good variety. You can actually swap out the images and the pictures of all these things if needed. Um, let's go down to have a look at the, maybe kind of let's look at the kitchen. We'll go to accessories and we'll drag a bit more detail here. Now the good thing with these is they're all grouped. So if you did want to, you can double click into them and you can access the individual elements like the wine and the glass and so on. Uh, let's just drag in a couple of those and we'll do a quick save. Always a good idea to keep saving as you go. Let's drag some bread onto here, um, some very tasty croissants. Possibly might need a plate for those in a moment. I think we'll have a little look. We can rotate them around to a more natural angle. So it's very rapid and that's the beauty with Twinmotion. It's working in real time. It's not like traditional rendering software. So here I've double clicked and I've gone into the group. And you can see I can move the group itself, but by double clicking, I can get into the group. So now we can put our croissants exactly onto a plate. Um, to tidy that up a little bit there. Good, okay, so by all means explore the libraries. That's one thing that I would really recommend. You do need to explore these libraries in order to find out what's available and what's, uh, you know, where things are. Like the coffee cup, you might have expected that to be in kitchen, but it's actually in the office section. Um, so definitely explore those libraries, find out what's in them, but do remember to build your user library as much as you can to populate that with interesting things as well. Okay, so we're just gonna keep working on this scene a little bit more. Now like, we're gonna talk about decals. Um, decals are a really good way to add um, sort of lots of nice external detail particularly. You can see a decal is something like um, a texture or a stain or some cracking, something that maybe makes the model look a bit more weathered or, mod or kind of mottled. Um, it's a good way to add a bit of grunge and sort of uh, kind of, not, you know, take away the perfection of a, a normal sort of computer generated image. So you can see they really do add quite a lot of detail without too much time. Um, so let's kind of carry on after the decals. Um, let's just do a tiny bit more work on the roof metal here. Again, we'll just rotate that round, type in 90 degrees just to get that rotation round. Just a nice looking uh, metal there, I just noticed. Um, that's cool. Good, okay, so let's have a look. Where else can we have a look at improving our model? So you can see it's really nice just sort of scene. Um, it's definitely one that's worth having a play with. Let's just drag some concrete onto the steps there. And again, we'll zoom in here. So let's take a look at how easy it is to adjust the time in twin motion. So really, if up in the top right corner, there's an eye icon. When you click on that, there's a bunch of different options that pop up. But one of them on the first slider is literally the daytime. So we can just slide that up and down and change the time. And we can also click onto the weather slider. And down in the dock, you can see we can kind of change the weather uh, as we go a bit more cloudy. That looks kind of nice with a bit more realistic, that sky. Uh, let's just frame that image up a tiny bit more. Um, and we'll keep working on the model. The, one of the things I really love with Twinmotion is you just keep going round and round. So working on the model, when you, when you spot something, it's sort of quite intuitive. Um, you can kind of, particularly with a scene like this, it's quite natural. You can kind of just work on it in lots of different sort of, uh, sort of times almost and, you know, just add a bit more detail when you need to. So yeah, we're just gonna add a bit more plants, a bit more visual interest for this particular view. I think that's what I'm trying to say. Every time you capture a different view, you often want to kind of add a little bit more detail. 
So here I'm just dragging some ivy actually onto the ground just to kind of add a bit of greenery to that um, that area down below the building, a bit mossy, a bit green. Um, you can see there's some really nice grasses here. Now the best thing to do with the grass, to be honest though, is to use the vegetation paintbrush. Um, and that's a quick, easy way to get a lot of grass into the scene quite rapidly. So we can kind of drag those down onto the dock. Not the detailed ones though, that's why those aren't working. So let's go back up here. Uh, let's just drag down the normal grass and flowers. So you drag those down to the dock. What's kind of cool is you can get your brush, you can adjust the size. And basically when we paint and spray, you kind of get this um, almost like a, a green sort of pattern, which is really indicating where you've actually sprayed. So then you can click on the painted vegetation in the, in the manager and you can basically up the density. But you do notice that sometimes you don't actually see the detail of the grass until you get a bit closer. Um, so in the preferences, a little tip here is go to fading of grass and you can change that to uh, something a bit further away. So this is how Twinmotion sort of manages that level of detail. You can see really detailed when you get close up to it. It does look nice. So yeah, that's cool. This is a really nice little view. So I think let's kind of save the model where we are. Just keep saving as you go. Great little tip. And let's just click back on to weather again. Let's have a look at the weather now. So as we slide down towards the winter, um, you'll suddenly notice at a certain point the snow is going to kind of come down onto the ground and then we go a little bit further and the lake will freeze. How cool is that? So we've got this beautiful icy lake um, with snow on the ground. As we change the weather and go through to more cloudy, it will start to snow when we're in the in the winter season. And instead of raining, it will actually snow. So that's beautiful. You can adjust the snow and the density and so on as well. So I really like that image. That's a really nice atmospheric image. I'm going to click onto the media dock and click create image, click the plus sign to create my first image there. And um, we can keep kind of working on that. Let's go for another image. And let's change the time now to something a little bit brighter, a little bit sunnier. And uh, we'll slide that down maybe towards the autumn, just kind of get a view that looks nice. Just sort of play around with the view there. Yeah, I'm kind of looking for a more of a sort of wetter mood to this sort of particular image. Go for something that's a little bit rainy. You can see it's very overcast and we'll kind of click update. So we've got two very different scenes. So each scene has its own exposure, its own auto light, its own weather in its own time. And that's one of the beauties with Twinmotion as opposed to other rendering software where you have to tweak all the settings for every single image. Here, every image uh, remembers its settings and you can adjust these in real time at any time. So quite unique, I think. So here's a nice sunny version. Let's kind of tweak that view and just update it. So when we go into the camera itself, we do have um, some really nice controls. We've got depth of field, parallelism, which is basically um, making the camera into a, uh, a single point perspective camera, and vignetting, which adds a nice sort of dark and um, vignette around the image itself. Uh, lens flares, which you notice a bit more perhaps when the, the sun goes down. Let's have a little look at the depth of field. When we click on the more, we can actually choose the focal point. Um, so we can kind of have the background quite blurred out, maybe even the foreground. And we can even type in the various distances here to be a bit more accurate with that too. To play around, I suggest you play around with the different focal lengths um, and camera distances there. We're on quite a wide angled field of view. Sometimes it does look really good to get a smaller field of view, zoom in and then increase the, um, the depth of field. So there's three pretty nice images created in a matter of minutes. And you can see as we click through each one, uh, the weather changes, the time changes, and so on. So it really does make it very easy to set up lots of different views of your model. Um, so we're just going to pan around a little bit more here. This is going to get another really nice view. That's a cool one of the lake. Um, and, you know, we'll kind of keep working on the model. I think we just need a little boat here just to finish off the scene. Oh, yeah, that's cool. So a really nice sort of library of boats and vehicles and buses, aircraft, all sorts of stuff you can try. So one of the reasons it's worth doing exercise like this is definitely so you can get to try out the different libraries. And then when you come to do some real projects, you'll know where things are and what's involved. So our scene's really starting to get there now. Um, let's kind of just keep working on this, adding a bit more detail. So I'm just going to go through and add a few more decals. Um, as I've said before, decals are a great way to add a lot of detail to your model quite rapidly. Um, you can actually load in individual image files now. They're great for things like graffiti or um, images, 
um, things like cracks and stains and stuff just sort of make that kind of concrete on that step look a bit less perfect you can see you can adjust the size and the opacity really easily uh, let's just drag some more things down onto this just to make it look a little bit more weathered and a bit more naturalistic so definitely recommend playing with the decals um, on scenes like this where you're trying to make it look a bit more a bit more natural let's just adjust the size and the opacity very straightforward um, some of the mossy mossy dirt and things like that they can be quite nice um, to try it depends what kind of project you're draw, trying to uh, represent if it's a brand new probably design maybe not so much but if it's something like this has been out in the wild for a while definitely going to help create a little bit more realism and interest to the scene so one way can, we can really boost the reflections is to use the reflection probes these are under the tools menu um, reflection probes can be increased in size and you can immediately see onto the glass the reflectivity it's essentially reflecting the environment um, and that's a really nice way to sort of fake up some deeper reflections in the model so we can kind of copy a few of these around particularly in front of reflective or uh, glass materials let's just drag that down a bit and you can see that glass really starts to come alive let's just move that bit closer yeah that's cool you can see a bit of reflectivity now coming in from the, the landscape into the glass so definitely use reflection probes as a way of increasing some more detail into your models okay so we're going to kind of get towards the final part of this video and um, which is essentially looking at the output stage so let's just refine ourselves where we got to with images we've got a couple of nice images here we've got a couple of internal ones here I created a few new ones here and let's just kind of get down and create one more really nice view um, I think really from memory this is a bit of a killer image looking across the lake here a bit of landscape and so on so all we need to do is click the plus sign to create that image if you click on to more we can just pop into format and just do remember to change the output size um, so for this particular one I'm going to go for a really nice wide angle let's go for custom and I'm going to go for something like 4000 by 2000 just a really nice long thin aspect ratio so that looks pretty cool if we kind of look at that on full screen um, do any final tweaking you need just sort of get that looking quite natural in terms of the eye height there so we'll pop back and we'll just click update that will recapture the image and uh, let's kind of get in here and look at one a little bit more kind of looking out onto the lake here maybe with those shadows that's pretty cool yeah I like that that's nice with just a little bit of detail of the tree in in the front there you see how detailed these these new trees are absolutely fantastic so let's click plus there so we've got a bunch of images we've got a little internal shot looking out we've got a few external shots looking at the different uh, contexts here maybe on this one we'll just have a final little play around with the weather just kind of make that look a little bit more wintry slide that down a bit just kind of maybe can't resist slightly icier sort of times that looks really nice good okay so we'll update that one the final little tweaking thing here just get that looking a little bit more natural that looks lovely yeah brilliant happy with that good okay so we'll go back to uh, media we'll go to video and what we're going to do is create create video to create our first frame and all we're going to do is kind of walk forward very nice and slowly and when we're ready we're just going to click the plus sign to add another keyframe let's kind of walk forward ever so slightly tilt the view and let's click another plus sign here and let's just walk forward a little bit more just approaching that lovely scene and do one more plus sign so we've got four keyframes here let's just save what we've done so far um, essentially every time you add a keyframe we can now rewind and we can click play in real time to play through the draft of the animation you got these lovely sort of shadows flickering and the final quality of these will be a lot sharper and a lot better but that's a really nice first part of our video now we can actually click on the plus button and add a second part to the video if you prefer um, I quite like actually just going back and doing completely separate clips so to do this let's kind of get out on the lake a bit more um, let's kind of look at this view here something like that kind of nice yeah and we'll click plus to create the project create the video I'm going to click more and go to weather and let's decide to go back to the sunnier times here 
Uh, let's just go for a little bit more atmospheric, something a little bit wetter, a little bit more overcast. That looks pretty cool. Just frame that up a tiny bit more. Um, and let's just update that first keyframe. So now what we're going to do is basically move forward a bit to the side. So if we click the D key, and we'll just spin round, try and keep it quite level, and we'll click create a keyframe. Let's go around a bit more, and we'll just slide that round. Let's do one more there. And the key is to don't do big jumps, go nice and smoothly, try and get each keyframe fairly equidistant in terms of its movement. Otherwise, you'll find that some will speed up and slow down. Let's kind of do one more there. Get a nice little angle there. One more keyframe. So let's have a quick preview of that one. Let's rewind and let's just play through. That's really nice. We're sort of centering on the building in the middle. Just spinning around there. Yeah, I can adjust that any time. And the great thing is we can stop it. We can keep working on the grandscape. Anything that doesn't look too natural, we can keep working on. Um, and I'll show you a really nice little tip. So on this first frame here, what we'll do is adjust the time. We'll click onto the more button, we'll go to location, and we're gonna go adjust the time, something maybe almost like a kind of sunrise here, seven o'clock in the morning. Um, and let's go back to the video here. Um, let's click onto maybe the options. Again, let's go for maybe two hours. Let's go for, um, it was seven o'clock, so let's go for nine o'clock. that time. Let's go to this frame. Let's click more uh, location. Let's go for 11 in the morning. Uh, let's keep going back. Back on our breadcrumbs. Let's click more on this one. Location uh, 11, so it must be uh, 1300 hours. So kind of bright in the middle of the day. And let's go through a bit more. And then on this particular frame, kind of go right down to the other end of the day where the sun sort of sets. That looks really cool. So gonna save what we've done so far. Um, and basically what we can see now is when we play through the animation, we're gonna get a time lapse. So we're gonna get that lovely sunrise. As we spin around the model, we simulate a time lapse during the day of the sun's sort of path moving around and the lovely shadows coming into play. You can see them going really quite nice and smoothly because we adjusted the time quite smoothly between each set of frames. Um, do bear in mind this is just a preview on screen at the moment. Um, the higher level of quality will come in a bit later on when we get into the final edit of the video. So that's really cool, I'm really happy with that. Let's save what we've done so far. Let's do a final review and look at exporting our media. So here's our couple of video clips under the media section. We've got this nice preview here. That was a nice sort of sunny day um, in the winter. It looks really, really cool. Just moving nice and slowly towards the building. And then let's preview the other one. That was the time lapse where we spun around the building and that's gonna look really cool. That's about 30 frames. Um, what I might actually do is just add in another few seconds here. Let's make this 15 seconds to make it a bit smoother. And I'm going to click settings and just double check the camera settings. Um, so let's go right back here to this more. A bit confusing sometimes. I'm just going to make sure that's, um, yeah, that's wide angle. So I'm pretty happy with that. Let's do the same on this one. Click on this one. Let's just check those settings there. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with the camera. Um, I think maybe should I try some depth of field on this one and let's kind of give that a bit of let's say 50 meters just so the background's a little bit blurred out as well. I'm pretty happy. Um, we've got the particles here. We've got a bit of rain. We've got the time lapse, all sorts going on. Let's just review our images. Again, we've got a bunch of nice images. This one needs a definitely a bit more work. Um, you can see, yeah, that's all looking okay. Looking quite interesting. Good. So we've reviewed all the images. We're very happy. Uh, we've added some details. So let's go for export. All I do need to do is load in the various images. So I can click them one at a time. If I prefer, I can click select all. Uh, that's fine. There's no panoramas as yet. Let's click video. And again, we'll do the same with the video channels here. And when we're happy, 
we'll just click start export um, and let's go and select our appropriate folder to export those to. So we've got a house by the lake folder here and we're just going to click select and start to let Twinmotion do its rendering. Now this is where your graphics card will really um, help the rendering. So the better the graphics card, the faster it will be. And you'll notice that when it first starts to export, it estimates the computing time. Um, I often find that it's a lot faster. We will see, and I will come back and report on that in the end and show you the final quality images when we get done. Thanks for watching.